have a freshly molted Ceratogerus darlingi, the curved horn or rear horned baboon. Look at that. This is one I plan on rehousing, uh, but I'm going to let it uh, harden up just a little bit more before I do it. But yes, very nice. No signs of that horn growing yet. Still too tiny for that. But looking gorgeous. Alright. Give them a drink. Well, good news. My uh, Poclotheria Vitata. The ghost ornamental molted. Looking sweet. So now, I guess this specimen is considered about two inches. There we go. That's right, you do your cute little pokey walk for us. Just don't do your pokey run, and we'll be okay. Very nice. All right, cool update. Stay where you are. Just doing an update on my Pac-Man frog. Still doing really well. Uh, I do have a question for you guys who have kept or keep Pac-Man frogs. How often do you give them calcium pot powder uh, with their prey? You know, like dusting crickets or worms or whatever. How often do you do that? Do you do it every feeding? Do you do it maybe once a month? once every two weeks how often do you do it if you could let me know I would greatly appreciate it because obviously I want my Pac-Man frog to be healthy as all get out and so I want to make sure I'm doing everything right I'm definitely a noob when it comes to frogs so let's see if maybe he might want to eat this cricket Let's see. <laughs> uh, apparently not on camera today. <laughs> the cricket's laying on its back. <laughs> They're back to back. That's cute. I guess they're going to snuggle for a while. <laughs> anyway, a little update. If you can uh, help me out, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. Okie dokie. Moving on. Well, that's the antenna of my Scolopendra subspaneeps. <laughs> Sorry, that's all we saw. But, uh, I think it was happy to get that cricket. <laughs> so cute when they do that. Let's talk about tarantula body language today. When you want to test the mood of your tarantula, because you might want to handle them, it's best to do so with a paintbrush, because in case they quickly turn around and bite, at least they're biting something soft instead of hard like the tongs. So, what you do is very lightly touch it on the abdomen here. And you could even try the legs because they hate the legs being touched even more. They're more sensitive to the legs. And if 
do see a spider do that. That means that they are telling you to leave them alone. And I advise against handling a spider that does this. Obviously, you guys who've been in the hobby for a while know this. This is for the people who are new to the hobby. But yes, very angry. And I'm very surprised it took her as long as it did to get angry like that. It usually takes maybe one touch, and she does that. But she was a little more tolerant today. So that's why you need to do your research on which tarantulas are... <clears throat> excuse me, moodier than others, which ones are more likely to be bitey. This is the Formictopus cancerides, and for those of you who have done your research, most of this uh, genus is very, very defensive. So, knowing that, I don't ever handle this one. But, in case you don't know, there you have it very nasty temperament but you know they're just being territorial slash defensive because they're scared of you guys they're not out to get you they're just scared of you so when they're like that best to leave them alone if you respect them you won't get bitten Alright, that is what a defensive tarantula looks like. Let's check out some more temperament, shall we? Alright, let's give this one a try. Got my trusty paintbrush. There's an example of a docile acting tarantula. If it just sits there, doesn't whip around and bare its fangs, or doesn't run away, doesn't kick hair, just sits there, then it will most likely be open to you handling them. Keep in mind, tarantulas are wild creatures, therefore they could bite any time. Uh, their mood, moods could change very quickly. So when you handle your teas, you're definitely at a risk of being bitten. So just keep that in mind, folks. Uh, this is a Grandma Stola Pulchropes, and for those of you who uh, don't know, these tarantulas tend to be moody, um, typically. Um, sometimes it lets me hold them, and sometimes it doesn't. It just really depends on the day. That's why, you know, it's always good. Uh, to test their moods. And this is a New World Tarantula and because of that I would be more willing to handle this one uh, uh, if it allowed me to obviously because the venom is not nearly as potent as it is in Old World Tarantulas. I don't even attempt to handle Old World Tarantulas. Now I have accidentally handled them before when they escaped onto my person but uh, uh, luckily, they were smaller when they did that, <laughs> but even still, they can, uh, even a bite from a juvie could pack a punch, apparently. But, uh, yeah, so that's an example of a docile acting tarantula. All right, let's move on to another one. All right, next up, we have my Acanthoscuria geniculata. And we're going to test the temperament of this one. This is one I kind of wish I had longer tongs for, and I'll explain that in a minute. That is why. These guys have voracious appetites. They think that everything you put around them is food. And if that's your finger, so be it. It will bite. So it is best to leave your Acanthoscuria geniculata, especially if they act like that, alone and never handle them. So there you go. As you can see, it had, well, it's not anymore, 
but it had uh, taken its uh, it had clamped its fangs around the wooden part of the brush and then let go when it realized it wasn't uh, edible <laughs> so yes you do not want to handle a tarantula like that okay and let's move on <clears throat> I don't know if you will. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, I think it kicked hairs as it was turning around. Um, as you could see, it turned around and faced uh, the offender, which was the paintbrush. When a tarantula turns around and faces whatever it touched, whatever touched it, then you do not want to handle that tarantula. And there's a little bit of a slight defensive posture there. <clears throat> the fangs are out a little bit. Leg, front legs are up a little bit. But I think as it was spinning around, it did kick hairs. So, you definitely want to leave this uh, Nandu Chromatis alone. Alright, let's check someone else out. Sorry about that, guys. He said dog scared me half to death. <clears throat> well, as you saw, the uh, spider kicked hair. And... Hey! Be quiet. Make it a video here. Kicked hair. Therefore, it really doesn't want to be bothered. So, the, you may have seen a little bit of the hairs fly in the air. Excuse me a moment. That's another example of a uh, tarantula that uh, gets startled very easily, very skittish, and defensive. You want to leave that one alone. Just in case you couldn't tell. Nandu Colorado Velosis. Don't recommend handling them. And they have bad hairs, too. Very skittish, will not handle. Because skittish teas are very unpredictable, especially. This is my Euaphilus species blue. I used to be able to hold this one, but ever since it molted the last time, it has been this way, very moody. So I don't handle uh, her anymore. <clears throat> so guys, I think you have you you know you got the picture. And notice I did not feature any old worlds because I do not even test their moods because there's no point. I'm not going to handle them anyway. Most of them are going to be defensive because they rely on their uh, potent venom, their biting, to uh, defend themselves with. They don't bother with the hair kicking because they do not even have the urticating hair. So um, that's why I only featured new worlds. Because I at least will attempt to handle some new worlds. Some of them. But I thought we'd end with this beautiful looker right here with the blue femurs. <laughs> I think she's expecting something to eat. She's looking at me like, um, you going to reward me for uh, tapping me on the booty like that, huh? I guess I can manage something. And when teas have voracious appetites like that, I don't uh, really want to handle them much. There you go. Alright, hope that helps. Alright guys, um, I've been asked uh, before how I handle my tarantulas. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that right now. Uh, this tarantula already proved to be docile earlier in this video, but like I said, 
their moods could change, especially Grandma Stola. So I'm going to test the mood again by touching the abdomen and legs lightly with the paintbrush. Sometimes you have to be a little persistent just to double check. Because you may recall my Formictopus Cancerides took a little longer than I thought he she would to whip around in that threat posture. But knowing your uh, species really helps to know which ones you probably just shouldn't handle anyway. Okay, so that one is proven to me that it is going to be accepting of me handling it. So here's what I do. I put my hand flat in here like this and then I try to coax the tarantula over to my hand like this. Sometimes it takes a little <laughs> while to nudge to get them to uh, move especially when they're uh, <laughs> canatonic like this. It takes a little persistence and you also, also I keep an eye on their chelicerae. If you start to see their chelicerae spread apart that's where the fangs are you know um, you probably want to back off very slowly. Um, come on I know get on there come on we gotta show the people we gotta show the people how this is done you're not you're not making it easy on mama come on come on I know let's go sometimes you have to lift them up a little bit <laughs> now when you handle your teas uh oh claws got stuck in the fake foliage come on now come on let go there we go and there you go so when you handle your tea do not do it far off of the ground because if they were to get uh, scared excited and, and uh, if they were to fall on the ground from a high distance they could uh, get severely injured to the point of possible death because their abdomen is especially delicate and could rupture so yes, this is my, again, my Grandma Stola Pokerpees. So yeah, there you go. Uh, something I recommend, do not hover over them. Uh, don't reach down and grab them because they're going to be threatened by that. Despite having eight eyes, they do, they do not see well and they will perceive you as being a threat they will probably um, think that you're going to eat them you know uh, like you're a bird of prey or something like an eagle or a hawk or something like that and you're just gonna snatch them away and eat them you know they don't know and it's just you know it's just scarier to them you're bigger than they are so you can imagine how scary that would be so it's best to, to um, you know kind of get on their level with your hand or under them <clears throat> don't make any herky-jerky movements because that will make them want to make some herky-jerky movements and you don't want that to happen so there you go simple as that and so you know how I, I can't really get to well I can't do this very easily but the way I have her dismount is just use the paintbrush and nudge her off back onto her substrate there very easy peasy some people like to pinch grab their tarantulas and whilst you know some people were very comfortable doing that I personally am not um, I just I'm just so afraid I'll hurt it by doing that but some people have done it for years that they just feel like they could do it without injuring the tea and if so you know all power to them but that's not the way I do it all right hope you've enjoyed this video guys stay tuned because I got the feeding video coming up next because June is almost here 
All right, let me use this hand to turn off the camera now. <laughs> Thanks, guys.